Hope you brought correct change, because today we're riding the struggle brush. Hello everyone and welcome to Ninetales Hobbies and my series New for the Noob God. In this video we're going to be painting an Epsilon Sniper from Corvus Valley's game, Infinity. It's an awesome model, super cool, super detailed with lots of little fiddly bits that you can paint and mess up on and then repaint and then mess up on and then re... you get the idea. I had previously painted one of their models to come up with a color scheme and what I thought was a pretty good paint plan, but I was wrong. It was a, it was a bad plan. It was a, it was a real bad plan. But I guess there's something to say for stubbornness. Real quick before this video starts, there is something that I'm wanting to try. Don't know if it's going to work. This is an experimental film. Since I'm new and everything, I figured why not? So this is going to be me watching this edit for the first time after it was complete and commenting on it. So it'll be a little bit of a filmed live kind of deal. We'll see how it goes and I'll be over in the corner and everything. So yeah, let's give it a try. So I started off cleaning up, snipping off all the little metal bits and using the hobby knife and then going over to the file and filing responsibly in one single direction and not destroying the details on the elbow because I would never do something like that and then not cutting the slot big enough in the base for the model to fit through and then going back and recutting it and then having my glue dried on the tip so clean that off and then still finding out that the glue was dried on the tip so clean it off again and then have all the glue go all over the everything and try to clean it up real quick no such luck super glue all over the base but that's fine oh that's a problem for future drew rattle can shake your rattle cans shake it for at least two minutes shake it like you're mad at it and then quick short burst you know practice on a wall if you have to no don't do that but yeah you get a good distance and then xenothal came in with some gray you know you don't get the precision that you do in a with an airbrush or anything but you can xenothal with a spray can don't do it too far away about yay far and you're good just constantly be in motion and don't get too close you'll goop it up if you get too far away you get those little speckly bits all over it and then yeah when I was doing the arm making sure that the orientation was correct so that the shadows would be in the right place looks looks all right and yeah I'm doing this in sub assembly because there's some itty bits on the inside and this is the original mini that I had the paint plan except I wanted to do something a little darker a little more midnight so I start with a thin base of matte black and these are just getting in all my base colors and everything I do to the main body I do to the arm I come in with some uniform gray on the backpack, the shoulder pads, knee pads, the straps. And you know, the uniform was pretty close to the, the primer. And then yellow green for all the little hexagonal cyberpunky soft armor bits. And then I wanted to bring attention to the face, of course, the upper part of the area. So I did some vermilion for the visor. And then I was going to do the dark Prussian blue and uh, forgot to, almost forgot to do a glaze and then I did my glaze too thin and yeah so I tried to keep all the light parts on the left side of the model where the light source was coming in I put a little bit on on the shadows just to for some cohesiveness and everything I think all in all I probably did 10 to 12 glaze layers of the blue uh, later on I realized what I should have done but we'll get to that uh, but yeah I wanted to keep it in the darker realm so I was too afraid of putting just straight blue on it and one ruining the xenothal that was there uh, even though I put the black on you could still kind of it was still lighter on that side uh, but I didn't want it to be too blue uh, I wanted it 
especially since this guy's like a sniper, figured he's hiding in the shadows and everything. Yeah, just getting those base layers down, making sure everything's solid and uh, in place. Really like that yellow green chartreuse is one of my favorite colors to mix into a bunch of stuff because it's got the yellow and the green so it goes with a lot of different things. Uh, it's got some nice punch to it. And at this point I'm doing starting my black glaze, getting the shadows in on all the grays. Uh, and that's that's the biggest fight that I had through this whole thing is I just go back and forth and back and forth with the grays and the shadows and trying to get everything situated correctly. Uh, but yeah, doing some more of the Prussian blue in. And like I said, these, these models are awesome and, you know, as, as cool as they are, also the Bane is, is the, the small little details and trying to figure those out. And, I mean, it, it makes them an interesting challenge but as also a, a new painter, it makes them slightly frustrating, but it's like, you know, something I'm doing to myself. But it is making me a better painter. Um, and then I'm coming in with the highlights where I've, I've put in the initial shadows, kind of block them in, and trying to feather the transitions down, uh, get them the way I want to. And I'm going to be doing some more O12 uh, faction members, but I'm kind of hopping around on different models, seeing what I want to do with what and everything for the channel. So we'll see where that heads. Trying to blue it up a bit more. Again, sticking to the, the left side of the model, my right. At this point, I come in with some straight Prussian blue, uh, just on the, for the highest of highlights and areas, because I want to see how it kind of relates to the rest of it when I put some actual blue next to it to see how blue or black that it's reading. I want it somewhere in the middle. Start doing a little bit of edge highlights. This is ultramarine blue. Again, this is to kind of see what it's going to look like once I get some edge highlighting in. And I'm not, I don't edge highlight the whole thing. I just do the parts that are getting real, uh, a lot of light source coming into them. So this isn't a space marine. You don't need to edge highlight the whole thing. I mean, you can if you want to, but not how I'm attacking this particular uh, mini. Uh, and I come in with some Necromancer Cloak uh, for a translation between the black and the uniform gray uh, as a transitional color to help feather that out a bit more. And then I washed the yellow green with a green uh, wash from Vallejo. And that was just to seep down and make the rest of it kind of jump out and pop. Came in with some lava orange on the visor uh, for the highlight on it. Yeah, uh, this is a uh, grimoire purple from Army Painter, and I just it's a more blue purple, so I kind of wanted to cool it down, but also get a little bit more visual interest. This is a super thin glaze, um, just kind of helps I think read a little bit better. And then I came back in with the yellow green where I did the wash and highlighted just the raised areas. Yeah, just getting those shadows more. Getting the darks darker and the lights lighter. Trying to get my transitions to look the way the way I want them to, although my skill's not quite there yet. And then doing a little bit of edge highlighting. These are some wide edge highlights with ash gray. Uh, I'm gonna come in with some thinner ones later on. Yeah, arm 
arms coming along just as good as the rest of it. And grays down. And e even though the grays aren't like the main part of it, I think the transitions for it were more important than getting the blue to black. Um, maybe it's because it was so dark that it didn't quite matter how, how smooth those transitions looked. Um, whereas the gray just stands out a whole lot more. And then I started working on the rifle and I matched the color scheme of it to the sniper himself with a few other added colors uh, in my brain. You know, story-wise, maybe the sniper is a little eccentric and instead of a rifle that blends in or whatever, he you know, has something that is a little more outlandish, a little more garish or ostentatious. Now, I like to make stories up of all these characters as I'm painting them. This is one of the members of Vermilion Squad. It's a odd assortment of individuals. Uh, the, the paler color that is going, uh, has been put down, is uh, Necrotic Flesh. It just went pretty well with all the other colors that I'd already put in. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised with that. Then I came in with, uh, this is Necromancer Cloak and Uniform Gray on top of the Necromancer Cloak as a highlight. And then, uh, as with all the Prussian Blue, I'm highlighting with Ultramarine. And then the Lava Orange on top of the Vermilion. Then I added a little bit of Skeleton Bone. Uh, to highlight the necrotic flesh. And for some reason, I thought I was going to throw vermilion in because I don't know if I was thinking it was going to be like a bounce reflection or what, but I quickly covered it up to hide that giant mistake, you know, mistake number 485,000. But I'm tidying all this up because I want to. I've got the body uh, to where I want it. The arm is solid, and here in a second I'm gonna start attaching the two. And putties on there. I got a little bit of, of paint on, so I just gently scrape it off. I uh, figured I'll have to go in and do a little bit of touch up uh, here and there. It's inevitable. Come in, just do a tiny little dab of CA glue, put it on. I figure I'm gonna have to you know, gap fill this and everything else the way this has gone, but surprisingly enough, the arm fits on great. I got a little bit of super glue on the back where the glove got stuck, so I'm going in, touching that up. It's also at this point, my brain goes, oh, you can take the black and the Prussian blue and mix them together and make a midnight. But, you know, that's eight hours into this 12-hour paint job. So, live and learn and paint some more. That's the way it goes. So, just coming in, trying to tie everything together. Trying to tidy up all the transitions even more. Laying in that black glaze. All those different transitions. Coming in, edge highlighting with some ash gray. All the spots I hadn't done before. This is the sidearm, and I just matched it color scheme wise to the rifle. Oh, necrotic flesh, vermilion, dark Prussian blue. And then came in with some demonic yellow and just the tiny little touches for highlights on that. Also did it on the visor on top of that lava orange, just a tiny little And then I wanted the rifle to look a little used, so I came in with some of the Grimoire purple, uh, demonic yellow, and vermilion, and did a real thin glaze, and then wet blended them all together. So it gave a little bit of a heat distress to the suppressor. 
yeah, it's starting to it's starting to look like something. Not finished yet, but it's getting there. It's all right. Not hating it too much. Yeah, darkening those shadows up, especially on the straps and all the little tiny bits, trying to get the that metallic look down as best I can. Then coming in with some matte white, doing the final little edge highlights, and I don't do all the edges, I just do the main ones facing the, the brightest of the light source. Yeah, darkening my shadows up. That's the thing, I mean, getting these transitions down, we, you know, we want them all to work the first time we do it and everything, and more experienced painters, sure, no problem, but, you know, uh, you know, perseverance, or, you know, whatever way helps phrase it to, to get it for you, but just keep, keep trying, keep going at it, and it's paint. If it doesn't work out, do, do another layer. And then I start to throw in the base, just do some cork. I want to do like a urban rubble, almost like he's standing on a sea break. But the way I ended up painting it, it looks a bit more like he's in an urban scene. So I come in uh, with this cork after I size it, chop it up with some scissors and a hobby knife. And uh, yeah, I know that it's going to be too rough if I just paint it straight up. So I get the idea, I'm like, well, it's not going to sell too well, so I put a paper clip in it, clip it down to look like some rebar that's sticking out of it. And then I want to do and get some liquid green stuff, come in and kind of spackle it. And at this point, you know, struggle some more. Uh, all of my footage of doing the base uh, got corrupted, so I pretty much wet blended a couple of different grays together. Stuck it on, looked at my light source, I, I pinned it on to the, the base, and uh, I, I did actually get some footage of putting the sand on, spreading the super glue around. And I painted the sand uh, with a black base and then did some gray uh, dry brushing on it, and that's what kind of led to the more urban look than, than beach look, because I didn't want to just leave it straight sand color but it worked out pretty well and yeah uh, I would love to hear what you guys think of this style of video like I said it's experimental uh, like like it dislike it I don't know uh, but yeah the model turned out pretty well I got a little bit of sand on his feet had to scrape it off uh, repaint some bits but here it is and uh, thanks for listening thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one